let's bring in our next guest on FT Live, one of our regulars, Ryan Helsley, uh, flamethrower on the St. Louis Cardinals, joining us right now. Oh, love matching the, hats. Uh, love the hat, too. <laughs> Winter hat, gang. Yeah, a little, little cold up here. Got to stay warm. Yeah, but your there ears you aren't cold, I guess. Your ears aren't cold. It's just just the top of your head? Yeah, I got I got bed head, so I had to cover it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the move. That's the most important that. thing. If the head is warm, heats the rest of the body. Ears are fine. So, Ryan, let's bring this combo right over to you. Um, when you play in New York, do you feel the difference after a game, if there's something big that goes on? And what do you think about the difference between playing in, say, a smaller or mid-market or a lighter media coverage market versus playing in a big spot? Like Kip mentioned, that some players will say, hey, I don't want to go to New York or Boston just because I don't want to handle all of that. Yeah, I mean, it definitely plays a factor, you know. Some guys, like you said, don't care as much and can handle the added extra pressure, you know. But other guys, you know, don't want that added pressure, you know, because that's something else you got to worry about and handle throughout the season. You know, and I think a lot of guys, you know, just want to play play the game and go about their daily business and their routines and not really worry about the outside noise. But that's kind of part of the deal when you sign up for this thing. Yeah, good call. Uh, what do you think so far of the uh, hot stove season? How much are you paying attention to things, including what your team has done, which is quite a bit so far? Yeah, I've been watching a little bit. You know, I kind of expected us to have a big off season. You know, it kind of left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Um, not quite used to having the season we did last year, but, you know, you never know with professional sports. Um, you're in and you're out. So um, it's exciting, though. You know, I had three guys who have had a lot of success in the big leagues and, you know, be leaders in our clubhouse now. You know, be excited to get down there. And, you know, from what I've seen, they're expected to do more. So, I mean, still working and still going, you know, so it should be an exciting rest of the offseason. When you get three guys this early to add to your rotation, are you sitting there like, okay, well, let's let's see what else we can get. Let's let's scoop this guy up and let's <laughs> scoop this guy up. Or is it, has it been boring the last, like, week and a half since they haven't signed anybody? No, no, not boring. I mean, I think – uh, you know, having those guys, like I said, is really exciting. And, you know, coming to the offseason, it's like we have such a big hole to fill. And, you know, Sonny Gray, who's pitched great the last few years, and Kyle Gibson and Lance Lynn, you know, steady pieces in our rotation as well. It's going to be exciting. And, you know, maybe we add some bullpen help and, you know, maybe another starter. I don't know. We got a lot of – see a lot of stuff about there about trades. And, you know, it's going to be exciting, that's for sure. You got any you, – you've been a Cardinal for life. You got any – Buddies that are free agents or on the trade block that are out there right now? Um, I don't think so. I mean, all the guys I kind of grew up with are already on other teams or, you know, like Dakota Woodruff and or Woody Woodford and uh, Kisner grew up with them. And then like Zach Gallon and Sandy, you know, pretty much everybody else is kind of stuck with their team, so to speak, right now. I don't think anybody's really made it to free agency yet. So Jordan Montgomery, he's a free agent. You're not are you giving him a call or are you like starting pitchers? Those are those guys don't really work every day like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got got enough going on. He don't need to hear from me. I'm sure his phone's ringing off the hook with, you know, his agent and other teams trying to talk to him and obviously we'd love to have Jordan back. You know, he's a stud for the Rangers and pitched great for us and you know, it could be a horse for us too in the future. Um so that, that'd be exciting if we get him back. That's what I mean. Like, call these guys and be like, hey, look, this is what I'm going to do. Like, you come out, you come here, you sign, you get your millions, because we know the Cardinals have millions on millions on millions with the whole city that they have behind the stadium and fans are always coming out. Be like, you just you just get us through seven and I'll lock the rest down. For you <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe I need to start doing my part, my fair share. And yep. I need to look and see who's still in the market and Tell them, hey, we got got something good cooking over here in St. Louis. You know, we need that's what you got to do. Absolutely. Come, come guy. Hey, Ryan, did you see this coming from Monty? And when I say that, obviously you had him starting two years ago when you got him at the trade deadline, but then he starts out this season with St. Louis, pitched really well, goes to Texas, pitches even better, shows off on a national stage in the postseason. I'll go off. I'm, I'm into the numbers. I'll go off some some reporters that were thrown out before the season started. Maybe he would get like a Taiwan Walker, Jamison Tyone type of contract, which is still great. I mean, those guys signed for like in the 70s, 80s million dollars. Okay. Um, like, for example, I'm just looking these up on the fly here. Four years, 72 for Taiwan Walker. Jordan's going to double that. So 
his value increased in one season by like a hundred percent. Did you see that coming? And if not, what led to that? Yeah, I think last year when he came over, you know, he pitched really well for us and, you know, not knowing him, obviously and getting to know him, it was really cool to see. And then started out pretty well this year, you know, it was one of our best pitchers. And then, you know, we struggled mightily throughout the whole season and obviously we had to trade him and then, you know, went to an even bigger market team, you know, than St. Louis, they're in the, playoff push and he pitches great and then you know you always hear guys say you got to have you know your best season at the right time and I think he did it you know like you said I think he's gonna make himself a lot of money he pitched great in the biggest moments you know and that's what teams want they want guys who've you know proven themselves and you know he's a six-year seven-year bet whatever he is now and you know he's, he's gonna earn every dollar that he gets you know he's pitched great and always been that steady guy and somebody can always count on and that's what holds down in your rotation for a full season and somebody, you know, you can depend on giving the ball to in any situation in the postseason. And he's going to demand top dollar and he deserves it. And then, you know, it's going to be fun to see his market shake out. What was he like as a teammate? Yes. Awesome. Super awesome guy. You know, some starters come in and, you know, they have their blinders on. They don't talk to you all day. And, you know, but him, he'd sit with you and do a, a crossword puzzle or whatever in the lunchroom and just hang out and talk to you like a, any old day, you know, he's just awesome guy. And obviously I was never in the dugout when he was pitching, but, you know, I'm sure when it was game time, it was time to go. You know, you saw when he's out there on the mound, he was competing and obviously his results backed that up. Um, but, you know, he's a great, great teammate and obviously a guy who's very experienced and can help push any clubhouse to that next level. Right. We saw that Yachty's back for you guys. as kind of an advisor role. Uh, what are you guys going to try to get out of that, having him around the team still? Is he going to be helping with the uh, catchers and pitchers and just kind of going through where he was before? What are you guys going to look to get out of him in that? Yeah, I think he'll help a lot. You know, I know Wilson looked up to him a lot, you know, and I think having, you know, Herrera now, who's played with Yachty a little bit, but I think it's going to be great for them to have, you know, an icon and a legend in St. Louis especially, you know, one of the greatest catchers to be around and, you know, just pour into them, which is going to only help the pitching staff as well. And, you know, you played against them and I've heard a hitter say you can never really guess, so to speak, to how he's going to attack a hitter because he just kind of thinks outside the box. And, um, you know, he's just so unique and he was really special and that he could slow the game down, you know, and maybe he can help, you know, our catchers do that too and just be able to see things that not everybody else is capable of doing. And, you know, just having a guy like that in a clubhouse who's won, who's been there and, you know, multiple all-stars and gold gloves and things like that, you know, he's going to add tremendous value to us. Yeah, there's not – there is no box when your Yachty was catching. I've never seen anybody steal more strikes for pitchers <laughs> than Yachty at that. And it's just like – he literally – it almost hits the ground. He flips it right up, gets the call, and he just kind of like smiles at you. And you're like, there's nothing you can do about it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the most annoying things ever. Thank God Kratz never was able to do it. I was actually way better than Yachty at it. That was the one thing I was good at. Yachty was just really good at tricking people into thinking that he knew what he was doing. He tricked people into thinking he was good. Got yep. it. For 20 years. He, he, tricked them. He, he tricked them the whole time. If he had gone to another team, he'd have been a backup, just like me. But he was, he was fine. That was going to be my question is, now it's actually official. Yachty and Wayne Wayno are out of there. Who's going to be missed more? We asked Descalso this the other day. Who is going to be missed more? And you can have bias. Since you're a pitcher, you can have bias, but you just better choose correctly. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Miles probably kind of falls into that, being there for, you know, going on his sixth year now and a veteran guy who's pitched well for us the last few years. And, um, you know, obviously Lance Lynn being a former Cardinal and Kyle Gibson and Sonny Gray coming over to coming over and then you know having Wilson back there who's you know won a World Series and you know those guys just being the leaders of our clubhouse things gonna be big and you know probably have to put some on my shoulders as well you know being out in the bullpen got to lead a little bit more now getting up there a little older um I'm more of a quieter guy don't don't speak a whole lot but maybe you know try to work on my speeches to help the bullpen guys a little bit and you know kind of help us find that extra gear you know because at some point in your career you know, you got to try to help make the guys around you better. And, you know, your first few years, you're just trying to kind of blend in, so to speak, and kind of get your solid footing and um, not step on anybody's shoes. And, you know, now I think being where I'm at, you know, maybe trying to uptick a little bit and try to be a little more of a leader. Okay. That's who's going to be the leader. My question is, who is going to be missed the most? 
Oh, Yachty missed. or <laughs> missed the most. Yachty or Wayno? Uh, There's no right know. answer. But there's a wrong answer. Yeah, <laughs> correct. I, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can go wrong saying either one. You know, when Wayno had his retirement ceremony this year on the field, I didn't even know Yachty was coming, and they announced that Yachty was there. And I'm, it was like we hit a walk-off homer in the World Series. And that, place, <laughs> that place freaked out when they heard Yachty and Molina and Pujols were walking out. It was, gave me goosebumps sitting there, you know. It was absolutely insane, you know. I don't, I don't know how you can pick either one of those guys, you know. I think they both bring a lot of value and, you know, they're great friends and, you know, just awesome human beings. You have to pick one. <laughs> and also they're not your teammates anymore so yeah, like yeah, they won't take it personal and if anything Wayno's probably going to do some media next year so i mean if you struggle he might talk shit if you do well he might praise <laughs> you just saying yadi might say yeah. it to your face though so there's that too yeah he's got I'm, a neck I'm tattoo young, he's got some street know, cred probably a little closer with Wayno. uh fantasy football just off the field stuff hang out with him a little more than yadi um you know, just being able to call him probably more of a friend, you know, for being honest, just obviously there's a language barrier with Yachty, but you know, if I needed something, obviously Yachty would pick up the phone and help me out as well, but probably a little closer with Wayno and, you know, he's a really good friend and, you know, someone who I'll definitely keep in touch with. One, one, there you go. one, one, one Yachty De- uh, Descalso, your new bench coach. If you're not sure who that guy is, Google him, but <laughs> one, one, he picked Yachty. You picked Wayno. That's fine. We'll tell Yachty. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good luck. We'll get back to him. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, um, if you want to learn more about your new bench coach, that was a fun conversation uh, from the other day. If you want to check it out in, in order to like learn his communication process, I thought it was very interesting. Um, all right. So easier question for you. And I'm being sarcastic. Um, Oliver Marmo, your manager at the end of the season, Uh, said this quote, and we asked Descalso about it as well. He said, I want a clubhouse full of guys that has one thing on their minds, and it's not themselves. It's winning a championship. So you start by weeding those out. Can you name those players for us? (laughs) 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 I'm I'm fucking around, but what what did that quote mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think looking at it, you know, as someone in the clubhouse, you know, a lot of guys in there probably had one of their worst seasons you know, in, in their careers. So, I mean, it was hard on everybody, not just the front office or the coaching staff, you know, it was hard on everybody, you know, showing up to the field, trying to figure out a way to win and, you know, maybe some guys having some bad attitudes. And, you know, I, honest, I honestly don't know, but I think it was just a weird vibe all year, you know, just coming in, expecting to win, win our division, you know, and rattle off a couple wins and then somehow lose four, you know. I just – we found a way to lose and we can never get ourselves out of the rut, you know, and just kind of treading water all year and – you know, that was my fifth season in the big leagues, and that was the first year we missed the playoffs. So it was, it was a weird year just to, you know, just all around the clubhouse as a whole. Well, if you can't figure out somebody who is the problem, guess who's the <laughs> Stop. problem? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> <Really? laughs> like no If there's no jerk on your team, you're the jerk. Am I wrong, Kip? Tell me, tell me if I'm wrong on this. Can't find the fish at a poker game. <laughs> you're the fish thank you no Sounds way like- no way basically really good from the leading from in the lead they don't know how to claw out of the, a hole i i will say this okay i'm again not going to point out names i know the cardinals right now if you re, if you're living under a rock unless you are you see they're looking to potentially trade some of their outfielders in their system in general right there are a lot of players there can you see it being difficult sometimes? Obviously, it's not your position, but being around guys where there's so much competition for those three spots and there's so much mixing in and out. And then you look at Atlanta, for example, they're basically running out the same nine dudes the entire season in their lineup. Does that sometimes cause chaos, even though it's competitive and it's the big leagues? Would you rather it be a little more sturdy? Yeah, I mean, I think especially, you know, our outfield's really young. You know, Jordan Walker came up last year and struggled in the outfield, but hit well. Um, I think, obviously, I've never hit every day in the big leagues, but just hearing guys talk, you know, they, they need those consistent reps. That's what makes them better. That's how they get better. And that's how they get confidence, you know. I mean, if, if you're playing two days and then sitting two days, like, you're not really accomplishing anything. And, you know, I think especially with how young our outfield is, those guys just need to, you know, go out there and fail. You know, they need to have that opportunity to go out there and just experience the 
ups and downs of a season and, you know, see what it feels like to really be an everyday big leaguer. And, you know, a lot of those guys, you know, Lars was hurt last year. He hasn't played a full season, you know, Walker was sent up and down and, you know, Carlson's been hurt. So like we haven't had those four steady guys, you know, in the three everyday starters that we've, you know, really needed. And just to not have those consistent reps, you know, in any position in baseball, you know, it's going to hurt you in the long run. You're not going to get as good and as get as much out of it. I think there's a luxury to have both. I think Atlanta has a luxury to be able to write whatever they're doing. They're, they're eight, nine guys the same day every day. I think every team needs to know that the 25 guys, and this is what we always did in Cleveland, it's like any tw- the 25 guys you leave for it from camp, it's going to take about 40 to win the championship that year. It's not just those 25 that help that team win games. You need those depth. You need that competition. You need that fourth outfielder, that backup infielder, because when someone goes down, you need someone to plug and play. So it's a luxury to have that depth and competition always. It's Yes, it's nice to have same guys if they stay healthy the whole, whole time, but I think it's good when you have – people who can come in, fill a role, give days off, and still still contribute to winning games. So I like that about your guys' lineup. Yeah, for sure. And if you look at the Giants, I feel like that's kind of what they've done the last few years. You know, they've yep. – for righties in there, they got all lefties, and if the lefties in there, they got all righties. You know, those guys aren't getting the full season of at-bats because they're switching it out all the time. So I definitely think that helps too. The Braves won a World Series. The Giants haven't won a World Series doing it. Just, just, just saying. You want to see, you want to see your boy Walker out there as much as possible. The dude's a three hundred hitter. Could be a three hundred hitter in the big leagues. But I'm going to more of the hard hitting questions now. Who's the most competitive dude in the fantasy team in the fantasy football right now? Um. So probably. Wayno, he sends the worst trades ever. But funny story, I'm actually not in our clubhouse league this year. I was a, a little hard-headed. I didn't like the way they were picking a uh, draft order. I was hurt at the time and couldn't travel with the team. And I was like, let's just randomize it. Like, that's the fairest way. But they were wanting to play a poker game with, like, three or four dudes that have never played poker in their lives. And all those guys ended up with, like, the worst picks. I was like, that's – not fair and they ended up doing it and I stood my ground and I didn't get in the league so I'm kind of kicking myself now but uh I'm in another league um with my agency and stuff so that's that's fun wait wait wait. so what what all went what all went down with this what what was it I don't feel like we're getting all the shady shady business that was going down here me and Wayne Wayne is the head of the league all right and maybe I should should have just to him and let him you know lead the ship and let him do it how he wanted to. Cause now obviously I'm not in the league and he got his way obviously. Um, but I, I just didn't like how we were picking it. I was like, if I'm investing this amount of money, you know, I, I want a little bit of a say with how the pick goes and it didn't work out that way. And they just, you know, everybody, it was like 11 people versus me. They were putting stuff in my locker, you know, just chirping me all day long, just like, you know, you're you're making this harder than it needs to be and I stood my ground and they left me out. So now now I'm kicking myself. <laughs> Wayno needs to be in a league with Tommy Pham. <laughs> hey, yeah. We need to let's I want to see what happens there. That's not right though to do it like a poker thing. That's not random at all. I didn't like that. You know, I was like, that's not fair. Mm-hmm. There was literally like three or four dudes watching videos on their phone how to play poker right before the draft and stuff. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not doing this. Kratz, would, would we would we have had the top picks then? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Dude, so Ryan, no, no joke. Kratz won an online poker tournament. Let's go. Kip Kip went to a big ass poker tournament in Vegas with us and he finished in the money. That, and okay. that's the thing. It is not, it is not luck. No. I mean, sure. Luck is involved. That's what I'm saying. I was like, it, luck is involved, Kip. Involved, but there is skill. So, yes. If, if you're, if you're a beginner and you're playing with people that know how to play, you're done. you will be done very quickly. Yeah. Yes. So right? what, so what would you, what would you, I, I, I see it. I don't do, since I won fantasy back in, 2012. I haven't done fantasy since, but my bad. Just hung it One, up. Back here. Easy, easy, easy Philly league. That's all right. Just 16 grand in my pocket, but there's that. <laughs> Damn. But anyway, what would you rather him do? Because I've been watching it like on Instagram. There's reels of like people who like they have like a whole Olympics. Like you got to throw. Would you would you rather have like a skill competition to be able to get the draft picks, or would you rather like 
pick out of a hat to pick to see who picks out of the hat to pick out of a hat. Yeah, I like the randomness way better. I think it's fair for everybody because whatever you do, somebody's going to be better at it than the next guy, no matter what it is. Um, and to combat his point, I was like, well, let's just hit golf balls like the Phillies did then, and then you'll win first because you're a scratch golfer. Like, that's the same thing. Like, And they didn't see it that way. And, um, but I think just randomizing it is the fairest way, and it makes it more fun that way and exciting, I think. I think you're right. I think you Ryan, stood your ground. We are behind I, you. I respect that a that. lot, okay? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a pain in the ass on things too. Sometimes Kratz definitely knows. Kip might know too. So I stand my ground and get stubborn on shit. And hey, even if next year it doesn't change, can I make the case that it's a big enough ball club that you have two leagues? One yeah. is non poker related, right? I mean, it's yeah. a 26 man roster and really 40 plus dudes play. And it would even be cool to get some of the upper level, like double and triple A guys that are going to be up in the show. Soon. No, no crats. <laughs> they ain't got no. that cash. How much was the buy-in this year, Helsley, since you're not even in the league? It doesn't matter. I think it was 3000 Yeah, like yeah. double-A, triple-A guys, they're getting like a for 250 AAA. a week. Fair, fair. Okay, but still, is there enough there to have a secondary league? Some I people think would everybody be just gave way to Wayno's authority because it was his last hoorah, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't have it, you know. I stood my ground and – uh, now we're here, so I respect that. I well, like now that you're a lot. In, you got our respect. Now you're yeah, a lot of respect. But now I you're in the Bobo. Me, you're you're in the Bobo agent league. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, neat job, Ryan. Here, I'll make sure you stay around with our agency, and we'll give you Justin Jefferson. What a great <laughs> trade! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty competitive too. We we got a good league going. Are there other players in that one too? Yeah, it's like me, Manoa, Bednar, Lance Lynn. Who else? What's the buy in for that one? I think that one was 1500 It was a little cheaper. I mean, um, mix in a position player one time. Tommy Pham slaps <laughs> one guy, and now no position players can get in these leagues. <laughs> yeah, no wonder you don't miss the Audi. I think it's all pitchers. I, I, don't, no, I don't remember everybody that's in it. But brutal, brutal league. Yeah, but technically he's got a teammate now. So Lance Lynn is your new teammate. Have you Lance spoken to him? Lance is probably in like nine leagues. So? Yeah. Yeah, I spoke to him a little bit. And we've been in the same leagues together for like the last two, three years. So I've kind of gotten to know him a little bit through that. And then uh, I tried to text him to kind of give me a nice trade, but he, he wouldn't do that. So since we're teammates now. so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, so – Descalso the other day, who played with him back in the day, first go around for Lynn, said he texted him and Lynn responded and said, Kratz, and help me out here if I get this butchered a little bit. I only signed with the Cardinals so I can fuck with you. <laughs> yes. Spot on. That's exactly where it's. Are you excited to get a player like this? I So, wayno has gone. Lance Lynn is also someone who comes on this show frequently, and I'm sure you've seen. He's outspoken. He's fun. He's super well-respected. Also, if he sucks... He's the first person to say, oops, I sucked. I'm going to try and fix it, right? Like he'll make a million jokes about giving up all the homers last year. Are you excited to get someone like that entering a clubhouse who I don't think anyone's not liked having someone like that before to play around? Yeah, I think he's going to be awesome. You know, you see his fire out there every time he takes the ball and his, you know, this is one, two to win out there. And obviously him being a Cardinal before, you know, helps. And, you know, I think he's excited about being home and being back with us and, helping us, you know, ride our ship and get to where we want to be. Um, you know, I think he's going to bring great vibes to the clubhouse and, you know, and just, you know, help us overall. I know sometimes, last one here, we'll ask a player, like, if they'll learn anything from a vet. Like, oh, you're going to, like, try and pick up his, you know, his two-seam grip or blah, you know, whatever, his slider grip. Are you going to maybe try and pick up any of his um, enthusiastic antics <laughs> on the mound in particular he grabs for an area when he gets pissed off in a good way after he records a strikeout or gets a big out to end an inning i don't know about all that i think that's kind of unique to him i, I don't know that i've <laughs> ever really showed much emotion out there to be quite honest you know um maybe i need to though maybe, maybe that helped me out maybe i'll do try it a little bit in spring training i'm sure the other team would hate it if they see me acting like a a douchebag out there on the mound <laughs> in spring training when <laughs> do the outs don't matter but uh Maybe that's the time to try it out. Absolutely. Yeah, Kratz, closer persona, right? Dude, absolutely. You don't know if – you don't know – I mean, you, you already have, like, the intimidation factor. You're already intimidating three of the nine guys in the order because you're like, 
you know, big hulking pitcher, blah, blah. But like the quiet, the quiet shtick. No, you got to know, like this dude might put one in my neck. Like you look at, you look at Aroldis Chapman and you're like, ah, the guy's throwing like 98 to a hundred. It's not the one Oh five. And then all of a sudden he got, he got 30% more of the league out after he put 104.5 in the back of Chaz McCormick's knee. So everybody else is now like, uh, so you do it one time. It's like punching somebody when you go to jail. Like you fight one dude. Now you got street cred. So I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Do what? There's some player out there that hates you right now. Me? <laughs> For because Ryan Helsley's going to throw 105 <laughs> in his back in spring training, and he's just going to be like, oh, Kratz, why? Eric. <laughs> All right, so hey. good. He's got stuff to think about in the offseason. Uh, Ryan, great to catch up with you as always, dude. Stay warm there, and uh, we'll catch you later on this offseason, all right? Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. Thanks. You too.